Now let's talk about the Mesilla Valley Mall. The Mesilla Valley Mall is, is an important part of life here. You can get off the bus and you can walk to the front door. Now the Mesilla Valley Mall is not a dead mall, but it's definitely a struggling mall that's been changing. So this used to be, the, this is the food court. So that used to be a, a restaurant and it isn't anymore, it's a blank wall. And this used to be uh, the cinema and it's not, it's also a blank wall. And to, it's unfortunate, we went, the video game store just closed, they're gonna be out. Uh, you want to help this mall because it's been part of Las Cruces life for a long time. Um, and there's a lot of independent vendors that are living in there. So Adam is going to say what you do with the mall. Adam's one of the designers, which Notre Dame, very good school. He's applying his knowledge to a mall redesign. I'm excited to see it. I haven't seen his work yet. Thanks, Jason. Um, so like Jason said, you know, we, we went and we visited the mall. Um, it's seen its glory days, um, but it is uh, by no means dead. And so what we were looking at is um, we always like to ask what if, right? Because everybody says, you know, all oh, the malls just, you know, it's this big asphalt place. How is this ever going to be a destination like it used to be? So we ask, you know, we ask what if. Uh, is there something we could do um, to work within the property owner's interests and also within the community's interests? So one of the things we look at, we look at the large area of paved and generally car depopulated area around the mall. Um, those are opportunities. And so the first thing that we were thinking is what if we added something right down here at the corner and we relocated the bus stop. Right now the bus stop occurs right up here move it down here, give it some greater visibility so people are aware that it's there. Add a little bit of density so that people at different stages of life, maybe recent college grads, some, uh, folks who are retiring, maybe looking for co-op housing, maybe they're looking for assisted living, um, can live, can start to live here and make use of that bus station. Perhaps medical offices move in, so those who have retired can walk right across the street, see the doctor, grab a coffee and head home. We also understand that in the future, parking is, going, is, is not totally going away, right? We have cars. Um, so in anticipation of further development, we added a parking garage in here as well. So you can see with some of the shops, uh, coffee was definitely, as, as we said, we saw coffee, 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 coffee. So let's, let's add a coffee shop here too. And then what happens next? Then maybe it starts to grow a little bit. This block changes its shape. You start to see apartments, condos, more senior housing, um, a few more shops around a green space. Perhaps you can walk, walk through the street here and walk down the hill to this nice little green space down here with, with some natural vegetation. Start adding row houses and apartments, again, to add more variety and more choices for, for places for people to live, uh, which also helps um, from an affordability standpoint. You could have studio apartments for college students, two or three bedroom uh, apartments for, for people who have larger families. And then after this, it starts to grow a little bit further. You can see here, um, we were thinking, you know, this is another little what if idea. We're thinking with the, uh, with the topography change there, maybe there's a way to install an amphitheater. You could have elementary school performances, spring concerts, fall concerts. Uh, maybe this is a location for a part of a festival uh, you could have there. Again, uh, now we're starting to get a little less dense. You can see the buildings are starting to be a little bit farther apart. Um, still some uh, apartment living. On the other side, facing I-25, you can see we're thinking maybe some row houses. And maybe at this point you have enough families that maybe a preschool makes sense. A preschool with a little playground so you can walk and drop your, your child off before either taking the bus or driving to work. Another thing we're also concerned with, uh, I mean, I was very impressed just walking around uh, the great views you have from this mall. So you'll see as this starts to evolve, you'll see we try to maintain and set up views out to the distance. So these are a few examples right here. These row houses are on either side of a green space that frames a view right out to nature. And then as areas start to fill in a little bit more, there might be a little bit more of a, you know, might make sense to have another parking garage 
And as Jason was saying, we hide those with you know apartments and, and other shops so that you don't see the, the parking garage. And then you can see we start to get also maybe a little bit less dense here too. Now we start talking about maybe some single family homes mixed in with the row houses, maybe some duplexes or triplexes at the same time. Another thing that we also do is you'll see little lanes that we add inside the block and that's where you can place your parking garage. Another thing you could do with the parking garage is you can actually build that to two stories. You could rent that out. Maybe that's another studio apartment for, um, for a college student, or maybe that's you know um, uh, your son or your daughter looking for a place to kind of get on their feet before hopping back right out on the road. That's a place where they can live. They feel like they have their own independence. They're separate from mom and dad, but they're close by. Then as things continue, uh, you can see maybe some of these areas of the mall start to go away, some of these larger big box uh, retailers, right? Because the nature of retail is changing. They're seeing a lot more pressure from online shopping. So one of the things that you can also see is these blocks actually occurred at some of the, what used to be you know, considered anchor stores. Um, those are the big, those, those larger retailers that are, that are starting to see uh, that, those challenges. So we're thinking those might be areas that convert into some of these more urban spaces. And then you have a really great opportunity here where that could be maybe a splash pad with a plaza in the center there. And these things could actually also bring people into the mall, which helps to revive, could help to revitalize that at the same time. You could see perhaps maybe there's another school right up here with another playground. Um, and perhaps another civic function here, maybe a small library branch to, uh, to create diversity in the civic options and the public space options. So you can see what we're doing is basically we're trying to stitch together the components of a complete neighborhood, a complete community. So at this point, property owner is going to look around and say, hmm, okay, well, I've kind of built out around. We have all these blocks. I'm going to weigh out whether or not uh, I want to keep them all at this point or if, if I think I have a cash flow and could, it might make more sense. Maybe the mall goes away. And what you have here is a main plaza, you know, a nice green space for people to, to gather, maybe a neighborhood center, a civic center building right here, right at the heart of the, of the neighborhood. A few more shops, some more row houses and additional apartments to, to bring attention to the center there too. And what's great about this is when we're looking at neighborhoods and neighborhood centers, we look at, you know, what's that five minute walk, right? How, what's that five minute walk? That's roughly a quarter of a mile. The great news here is from here to here is just under a quarter of a mile. So an entire complete neighborhood could fit right on this site. People could walk, they could live, they could work. 